Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, second update is uh, Council's aware a barge struck the uh, Route 168 bypass bridge. So I've asked uh, Earl Sorry, Public Works Director, to give a situation report on, on the status of uh, that facility. And there's a lot of work going on around Chesapeake right now. So to give a brief uh, report on that work and how, how the system uh, is functioning. Uh, th thanks, Mr. Manager. So uh, while the Colonel got to come and give you the good news about a bridge, I'm here to give you some not so good news about a bridge. So uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, we were advised by the Coast Guard on May the 11th uh, that the uh, 168 bypass bridge uh, was struck. So you can see in that uh, upper right picture, that, that's a picture of the bridge uh, looking from the Great Bridge Bridge East. So Kempsville Road would be uh, to the to the uh, left and Mount Pleasant Road would be to the right. Um, on May 12th, our crews and our structural uh, design team uh, investigated uh, the bridge, confirmed the damage. Uh, we took the immediate action of closing that outside uh, and uh, shoulder lane. And if you wonder how a barge could possibly hit the underside of the bridge, uh, if you'll look at the picture in the bottom, uh, that's a, a tug uh, with a spud barge. So a spud barge is one that has uh, the, the, the large uh, you know, columns on it. Uh, they're driven down into the mud and the muck when they're stationary to provide a stable platform. Uh, in this case, uh, they were in the fully upright position and that's what struck the underside of the bridge. This shows you a little bit of the damage. So uh, what you see there uh, in the brown color, those are our bridge girders. Uh, they sit on top of the pylons. Uh, there's 10 of them for this bridge. And you can see the damage uh, in the, the one kind of in the center of the picture where uh, it was pushed out of uh, alignment at the bottom. So, so fixed at the top, out of alignment at the bottom. And then in the next photograph, it just kind of shows where that sits in terms of the southbound span. So the area of concern is really right in the middle of that southbound span of the bridge. Uh, that's why we have traffic off of it uh, right now. So what are our next steps? Uh, we're already working with the design team. Yeah, that started last week. I expect to get the uh, plan submission for the repairs uh, early next week. Uh, we're taking a design build approach. So I already have a uh, structural contractor working with the design team. You know, we think that will cut down on questions that will expedite getting subs on board. Uh, that will also expedite the ordering of materials. Uh, we're going to do this as an emergency procurement, uh, and this certainly you know, fit, fits uh, the bill and checks the boxes under the Virginia Procurement Act. Our, our traffic team has been extremely busy, as you can imagine. Uh, so uh, th they're looking at a number of things uh, to, to uh, help with the traffic situation that the bridge strike has created. Uh, we're looking at the possibility of using the shoulder areas to allow two southbound lanes of travel across the bridge. Uh, we will be prohibiting all truck traffic on the bridge uh, between Kempsville Road and Mount Pleasant Road. And again, just to reiterate, uh, the bridge is safe for use, but we do need to get the heavier vehicles off of it, and we uh, need to keep those off of that uh, you know, girder that was uh, damaged. Uh, we'll also be looking at weekday versus weekend traffic. So we know that this time of year, our heaviest volumes are on the weekends where uh, folks are going to the Outer Bank. So uh, we'll, we'll look at you know, how we can alter uh, traffic patterns to accommodate that. Uh, we do have permission from the Coast Guard to uh, deviate from our opening schedule at the Great Bridge Bridge. So uh, basically, we will be... Uh, skipping the 8 a.m. opening and the 5 p.m. opening on a daily basis. So that's when the traffic is typically heaviest along that corridor. You know, th this was done during the Centerville uh, closures, and we think that would be a, a good mitigation strategy. Uh, 
So, so the big question has been, how long is this going to last? And yeah, my best estimate at this point is 30 days. We will do everything we can to uh, minimize uh, that time frame, but it's largely gonna rely on the availability of the specialized crew uh, to do what is known as heat straightening of that girder that is bent. Uh, there are none in this area. Uh, we have uh, you know, found some others, uh, uh, you know, most notably in Seattle, Washington. We've already been in discussions with them. Uh, so we will uh, get them here and working as uh, quickly as we can. Uh, it is worth noting that all costs are uh, being tracked with the intent of uh, reimbursement from the responsible party. Uh, our traffic staff and bridge crews will, will monitor the situation. Uh, you know, on an ongoing basis, we'll make uh, whatever revisions we can to traffic signal timings, just, just to manage expectations though. We can't solve this traffic problem with just uh, you know, changing signal timings. Uh, we can help though, and we'll continue to do that. And we'll continue working with our PubCom team and messaging uh, traffic updates. Uh, we're specifically going to target the trucking companies and the port has agreed to use their Everbridge system to get that word out to the, to the various trucking uh, companies in the area. Uh, while we're talking bridges, just want to give you a quick update on the Centerville Turnpike Bridge. So there is a 24 hour closure uh, that will start uh, tomorrow. Uh, evening and continue to uh, Thursday evening and that's necessary to accommodate a water line extension and that project is being managed by our public utilities department. Uh, the impacted businesses have been notified and we also uh, have our variable message sign boards uh, deployed to alert motorists of the upcoming uh, closure. And then uh, again, providing this update for your situation awareness only, and it's really immaterial to the 168 issues, but the Gilmerton Bridge uh, weekend closures will continue. The next scheduled one is for this weekend, uh, as well as the first weekend in June. Uh, there will be no closure over the Memorial Day weekend. And this work is highly weather dependent. You, if, if you visualize the crews, you know, working up on that bridge, it's an all metal structure. So, you know, any, any lightning in the forecast uh, shuts them down, but they also can't work if the wind is above uh, 25 miles per hour. And of course, you know, we, we've had a number of, you know, windy weekends. So that's why this is uh, stretching out somewhat. So that, that concludes uh, the, the update on that. I'll turn it back to the manager. Yeah, Mr. Sorry, let me ask you a question before I ask uh, other council members. I understand it's the same company that was uh, involved in the Centerville accident um, some time back. Who investigates these causes and uh, determines that there's some sort of corrective ants or uh, actions or something that they do if there requires additional training or, sure. I mean, it's certainly... Sure. So, so, so let me answer first by saying it was not the same. Uh, it was not the same owner and operator as what hit the Centerville Bridge. Oh, okay. It, it is, however, the same uh, you know company that recently hit the HRSD line within the locks. Mm -hmm. In in that case, the spuds were down, and they hit the the under the the, the underwater uh, you know line. Uh, most recently, the spuds were in the full upright position and they hit the other side of the bridge. So that, that is the same company. But in terms of who does the investigation, the Coast Guard uh, for anything like this uh, does a, an investigation. Uh, there are times that the uh, National Transportation Safety Board will also do an investigation. And then, yeah, as we uh, work towards a claim, we, we will likely have a, an independent investigation done as well. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bunn. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question for the city manager. Um, have we looked into possibility, the possibility of um, waving a toll on the, on the Dominion um, Veterans Bridge? And would that help relieve any traffic? Yes, sir, I'll, I'll turn that over to Mr. Sori, but I will say uh, I, I asked our emergency management team and our operations and public safety team to review just that. So take a look at the entire system, um, how it functions together, and uh, what mitigations we, measures we could take, obviously with regards to the bridge itself, but also the entire network. One of the things we took a look at was uh, whether or not lifting the tolls is, is even possible and then for, for this type of event, and then if so, if it would have any uh, impact on the situation and I'll, I'll turn it over to Earl to let you know what, what the team found. 
Yes, so we, we don't believe that lifting the tolls would, would have a significant impact on the overall traffic. And, you know, I'll use an example in the harbor crossing. So, you know, every day the variable message signs along the interstate and the local streets will say six and a half mile backup at HRBT, no backup at the Monitor of Merrimack. It's just difficult to get those people to, 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 to change uh, their, their habits. Uh, in this case, we did uh, yesterday see a roughly 17% increase uh, in traffic volumes of the Veterans Bridge. Uh, that was compared to the previous Monday, so not exact science, but we are seeing an uptick. I, I believe those that, that, are, um, that are inclined to use that are already finding their way there. We'll continue to monitor that, but I expect that number to, to hold you know, fairly true you know, you know, throughout the closure on 168. With regards to lifting the tolls themselves about do we have the ability to do it, um, we took a look at that and there's, uh, since those, that, that bridge was funded, uh, funded by bonds, there's very limited circumstances under which we can uh, lift the tolls. Generally speaking, there are severe weather events that are intended to be very, very short, uh, short duration. So without a declaration of uh, emergency, which is unlikely warranted in this situation, uh, lifting of tolls would not be a possibility. Mr. Hike. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Earl, so the, the barge owner operator that hit the bypass bridge and the one that drug through the locks and destroyed the fiber optic cable and the sewage line is the same company? That is correct. Is it the same captain? Th that I do not know. Okay. I'd like to know that if you could find out for me. Yeah, but we, we don't have that information yet, but uh, we have asked the Coast Guard to share their findings with us. So as soon as we get that, we will make that available. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Nellis. Thank you. Mr. Sorry, you'd mentioned uh, the Centerville Turnpike Bridge closure. I think we've all experienced the traffic backup in this area with the 168 issues. Is that closure necessary? Is it urgent that we close it this Wednesday, or is that something we can put off to assist with alleviating this traffic? Yeah, and, and the simple answer is that it would be uh, economically prohibitive to stop it. They've already started the, the work, so they've already started drilling underneath the, the canal, so um, to stop that work now is, is cost prohibitive. The fact of the matter is it, 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 it will be a 24-hour closure or less, um, we expect that to be done on time and be completed on time. So the impact to the to the weekend, which is I think is a lot of people's focus as well, um, should be non-existent. So it, it, it is cost prohibitive to, to stop the work that's already been started on that. Mr. Geis, have we considered um, two 12-hour closures overnight because the most traffic is coming through the workday? So I would imagine a 12-hour closure overnight for two days to do that work it, would so cause some alleviation. Yes, ma'am. Once they start, they need to keep going. So that's okay. Why it's not it's something 20. that can start and restart. No, it's, okay. It, it's it's pulling uh, uh, actual pipe through. So once they they've already got the um, drilling of the of the um, the hole, basically they've already started that. What they'll do when the and, and so that's happening without the closure. The actual work is going longer than 24 hours. It's already started. That's that final phase when they're pulling the pipe through. That's what requires the closure, and they have to start and stop and it doesn't make sense to, to, to stop that work for any period of time. They just need to run, run through it, get through it. Uh, and, and we know the impact. And, you know, we, the people in this area have, uh, you know, suffered through what we consider to be the, the you know, the planned closure. We, we closed uh, the Centerville Bridge, Turnpike Bridge, for um, maintenance and for refurbishment, and it was a great job. The contractor did a great job. It came in under budget and, un, and um, under timeline. And then it was hit by a barge. And then, the, so the folks in that area, we understand they have been impacted by this bridge and the closure of this bridge, you know, a lot over the last few years. Um, we're asking for a little bit of patience. We got to get through this short-term pain, uh, but we understand the impact, and we know that our citizens have have, have felt the impact of this and, and have in the past as well. I just have two more quick questions. I'm not sure who the correct person is, if it's Mr. Geis or Mr. Price. Okay. Um, as it relates to the um, Coast Guard's permission for the Great Bridge that we don't have to lift the bridge during peak hours, do we have that for the entirety of that 30-day period or is that something we're going to need to, to get extended and if so, can we make sure we get that extended for the entirety of that period? 
So when we made the request, we didn't know the, the duration. And quite honestly, it, it's still a little bit of an unknown, but uh, they approved it for a two week period and, and we will certainly be communicating with them. And our, our goal will be to have that deviation in place for the entirety of the closure. And then my last question, I think this is something that Councilmember Ritter um, often brings up is transparency to the community. I know we've posted um, a couple updates on Facebook. I would just ask if we could continue to be completely transparent and provide regular updates because this is affecting folks' lives significantly. Even sharing some of these photographs. I know a lot of comments that have been on there have been, well, where is the damage? Because we can't see it from the road. So if we could share a lot of this information publicly um, on our social media websites, that would be my request as well. Thank you. Mr. Manager, you mentioned earlier that they're, they don't see people working on the bridge because they're underneath the bridge. Maybe you wouldn't mind going there and take a picture or two under the bridge. <laughs> Probably not the best idea in the world, but yes, I, I assure you that, that the, the right folks are inspecting the bridge. Uh, um, the right folks are, are in place to make sure that this, this thing, although not the city's fault, uh, will get it corrected as quick, quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. One, Sorry, one, Mr. Mr. Mayor. So please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Earl, I, I went through that area earlier today in anticipation of this work session. Traffic is down to one lane back at Battlefield. Why is it not going to one lane right at the foot of the bridge at the, at the last moment? Why is that right lane blocked all the way up? It, it, it extends as far as it does to accommodate traffic from the ramp coming up from Battlefield right there at Kempsville Road. Uh, because if we, if we continued if we didn't give them a little bit more area to merge into, our fear was that ramp would back up even further than it is. Uh, when, when we get into a scenario that, that we hope we can you know, carry two lanes across the bridge, basically what we'll be doing at that point is by using you know, plastic drums, we will create a median going down the middle of those southbound lanes. Mm -hmm. And so that won't extend nearly as far and then you know, traffic and just kind of split that southbound traffic. So, you know, one lane using the the uh, the right shoulder and one lane using the left shoulder. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Uh, just one question about restricting the truck traffic on that portion of the bypass. How, are we going to do more than signage? So, you know, the, the entire emergency management team met this morning. Uh, you know, we've been in communication with Chief Zaleski. You know, we'll, we'll also have some enforcement to go along with that. But we're also, as I said, you know, through the port, we're reaching out to all of the trucking uh, agencies. The, the ones that we have a relationship here with, like Givens, we will reach out to them directly as well. Okay, and what do you consider a heavy truck? In this case, we're, we're primarily talking about, you know, dump trucks and on up. Okay, so is that done by X? I assume drivers know the identification of whether or not they're considered. Th that's, that's correct. So, so it's not necessarily a small, like a small work truck, but, you know, it's your larger sizes. So your, even your single axle dump trucks on up. And how about the emergency, like fire trucks? Yeah, so again, we met, met, met with the uh, chiefs uh, earlier today and uh, the, the fire trucks uh, could use the bridge, but we would need them in that uh, outside lane okay. or inside lane, rather. Yeah. I know lane. this is, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, guys. Mr. Rader, we, so um, the police chief and the fire chief had assured us that the plans that we have in place uh, will allow them to serve our citizens in the same manner they're serving them today. So they, they are fully prepared. They, they do operational uh, management all the time and they're ready to do this. They, they're working with the dispatchers. The dispatchers know. They're working with the, the individual crews. They'll know. And we'll know we'll put the right people at the right time to, to serve our citizens, even if it means using a different station that would typically dispatch for an incident. So we're prepared to do this as we move forward. Uh, and I bet they had a plan already. It was already done, You might right? expect that. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, thank you. That I have a concern about that. We have, in addition to the unneeded multiple don't park on the side of the road signs where I live on a 18 foot wide street, um, we have a big sign that says no through trucks and nobody pays a whit of attention to that. So, you know, I'm just concerned about the safety and, you know, people, when drivers are inconvenienced, 
and they see somebody breaking the rules, it makes them even angrier that, you know, they're put off and yet this person chose to ignore. Um, so I just hope that we'll be diligent about enforcing the no trucks and that would be super helpful. Yes, ma'am, we definitely will. And, and the website has been updated, cityofchesapeake.net slash 168 bridge. So um, we're, and we are uploading the pictures, all of all the, this presentation. So we, we are intending to continue to, to inform the public on, on the closure here on the 168. Which is terrific. And um, if we can make that easily accessible for people, um, I, I think it's a really good time to remind people that they can sign up for Chesapeake Alert and how they can get better notification. It's, um, you know, it's always illuminating, I think is the word. Not surprising, but illuminating to find out just how difficult it is to reach the most number of people. And I know we work very hard at that. So expanding in whatever way, encouraging people to sign up, and maybe even um, if Mr. Covey can figure out a regular daily or every other day update for folks. Yes, ma'am, that actually is our intention. So that, that came out of our, our work group as well. And, and you know, our PugCom team are, are uh, true professionals and uh, they're working, they're, they can't promise, you know, uh, daily, they want to do it uh, as needed and, and as regular as we can. And, and, and our intention is to be very flexible as we do this. We only want to close the lane when we need to close the lane, when work's being done, and we'll have two lanes when we can on the 168, and all that we want to communicate in an effective way to our, to our population. Okay, because um, people really are concerned about the time they're spending on the road. I guess that's the nicest way to say it, but people are really frustrated. So the more we can um, communicate with them, the better. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go to the next uh, topic, Mr. Manager, I do want to thank you and your staff for just the way you're handling this situation. We can't help when accidents occur or when things beyond our control occur, but we certainly can control how we react to them. And you know, you've got, you pulled together uh, a team of, of experts from communication to, to uh, traffic control, and uh, we're doing the best it could possibly expect. And I know that, as Mr. Ritter said, I was in that traffic yesterday. I, I, I was not real kind to myself while I was in that car, so I, I get how people get, because uh, it is frustrating. But thank you, and thank you for your staff.